Hello, my name is Jacob, and I am a Norse pagan. And I want to take you on another adventure across Munich in this rainy day to show you something else pretty amazing that I found that is actually Germanic pagan or Norse pagan in a way, or at least based on the mythology. Now, the reason I'm here in front of the Neptune statue, which I have shown you in a previous video, is because this is unique because most of the mythology that is made into sculpture and artwork across Germany and really across Europe comes in the form of Roman or Greek. This was the Greek revival period. This was a time that high society got really interested in mythology. And as I introduced to you in the Odin video, this is when society also got interested, at least here in Germany, in Germanic mythology and maybe even Germanic paganism a little bit. So with the Odin statue, this was a Germanic pagan thing, a Germ Germanic mythology thing. This is a statue to Odin or Woden. So I found another thing here in Munich that actually is Germanic pagan. It was made that way. And that is a fountain to the Norns. And that's what I'm gonna show you today and hopefully try to stay relatively dry, but I probably won't. So let us begin this adventure in hunting down the Norn fountain of Munich, Germany. Here is the original location of the Norn Fountain all the way up to 1965 when it was relocated to Maximilianplatz about a kilometer down the road. Now I couldn't find any information of why this was moved, however I can guess that it has to do with the giant busy road that now exists where it once stood. In front of me here is one of the busiest districts in Munich. This is where the majority of tourists spend their time. So it makes sense that a big busy road was built here. However, I do really wish that I could have seen the reaction of people of seeing a giant fountain of three old giantess here fate weaving goddesses of Germanic paganism. Regardless, let's head down to Maximilianplatz where you can find the Norn Fountain today. There is something in common and something different about the Odin statue and the Norn Fountain here in Munich. What is similar is the fact that I know so little about these objects, these statues, these fountains. Um, in fact, I probably know less about the Norn Fountain. I know it was made by a man named Hubert Netzer. When looking into him, he didn't really do anything besides a few king statues, a few, you know, Roman-esque statues and fountains. And it doesn't seem like he was affiliated with any form of pagan reformation or really any true huge interest in mythology or paganism. Um, and I know it was built in 1904, moved in 1965, and that's kind of it. I mean, I can tell you what kind of limestone it's made of, I guess, but I don't think that really gives us a clue to what it really is or what it really stands for. Now, the big difference is where it's located, where the Odin statue was kind of tucked away in the middle of nowhere behind a bunch of trees in a faraway neighborhood away from downtown. This Norn Fountain is in Maximilian Platz, which is a very prominent, you know, artsy, you know, niche, you know, rich area and it's very well taken care of. Okay, I'm kind of cheating because it's right in front of me and I just need to show it to you. And there definitely is a presence to it, very similar to the Odin, but also very different. All right, I'm just gonna show it to you. you can see what I mean. It has a similar vibe, but it is different. I think it's the fact that it is so apparent. I mean, again, this is next to a very busy road next to a very prominent area of town. Now, it might not be the Stokos, like, downtown tourist district, but at the same time, I feel like it belongs here. Now, something, you know, I really don't even know quite what to say here, just because it, when I first found this, I mean, it really, it really blew me away because it is just so apparent. And I love, absolutely love the design of it. I think the design speaks more to a faith aspect rather than a mythological aspect. I mean, the way the central well surrounded by the three Norns pouring into three smaller wells, I think that's pretty cool, pretty powerful. Um, and I mean, the first time I found this, I really did just sit around and just admire the beauty of this Norn statue. So in thinking of what to do with this video, I did think it'd be interesting to make out which Norn is which, Earth representing old age and the past. Berthandi representing what is happening right now, 
and then scold representing what will happen. I did take a few notes as far as aspects and characteristics we see of these you know, beings, at least in the representation in the 19th century or so. Um, so I think the most obvious here is right here, this hooded figure. I believe this is Ur. Um, it appears a little bit older, the hooded look. It's got, um, she's got scissors in her hand um, and definitely has that, you know, that crone feel because it definitely seems to be one of the aspects of Ur is kind of the old crone. Admittedly, I'm actually having trouble placing the other two um, because they are very similar. Really, the only difference is this Norn is holding an apple or some kind of fruit and the other Norn is holding some kind of linen. So based on the faces, this looks more youthful. So I'm thinking this is Skull because that is typically the more youthful of the Norns. Whereas the other statue, I'll show you, Whereas this statue feels more like Prathandi. It feels a little bit more mature. The way the hair is done, the way the face looks, feels just a little bit more older in the moment, I guess. Again, I don't really know. I feel very confident about Ur just because of the hooded cow, but the other two, I really can't tell. And there's no markings on the fountain itself to tell me one way or the other. But that's just what I can see from my observation. Please let me know down below what you think or if there's any uh, giveaways. I couldn't see anything with the apple or anything with the linen cloth, which one was which. But again, maybe the apple represents youthfulness. So maybe that means scald as well over there. I'm not quite sure. I hope you're just as blown away as I was when I first discovered this fountain. I hope you're really just taking it all in um, because as far as this video goes, this is really what I wanted to show you. Now, I haven't actually talked about the Norns in some time. I did a video um, earlier last year called The Norns, The Carvers of Fate, where I really dug into the research aspect of it and kind of gave my interpretation of fate and what I feel of the Norns. So I recommend you check that out if you want more of a deep dive into the like logic, the facts, and what we know from the historical sources. But really with this last bit of this video, I guess I would share what I feel the Norns are now. You know, it's been more than a year since I made that video. Obviously a lot has happened in the last year. So how do I feel about fate? And I guess to me, I feel just as closely with fate and what is fated to happen, fated to be, um, as I did back then, you know, and I don't think fate is an, a, a locking thing that keeps you, you know, bound to one certain thing. I think I described it as two endpoints with, you know, infinite possibilities to get there. Like, you know, something is fated to happen, but it's up to you, how do you get to that fated moment? And honestly, even today, filming this video, I knew the moment I woke up, for some reason, I was like, I'm gonna film in the rain today. And then I ended up getting lost on the way here. I ended up going off the wrong train and wandering around town. But for some reason, it all felt fated to happen. And really, if I didn't get lost, if I didn't you know, get off the wrong tram as an exit, I wouldn't have been filming here in the rain. I wouldn't have had this kind of lighting. So perhaps all fated moments come to this, refilming this in the rain, you know, filming with this kind of lighting. Perhaps there would have been people here. I'm not really sure. I don't know how deeply you can look into fate if it really can go into the small moments in life or if it's all the bigger moments. But I really can't deny that sometimes when you're going through life and you and it's like you, you hit that groove and you're like, man, why do I feel fated to be here? And that's how it's felt when I've met so many members of the pagan community. So many people that are members of the Wisdom of Odin community now are leaders in the Wisdom of Odin community now. It's like the moment I saw them the first time, it felt fated. And you know, <laughs> And, and sometimes with fate, I feel like there's moments you don't know where fate is. I mean, the first time I hit record on a camera oh, almost two years ago, I had no idea it would lead to all of this. I had no idea it would lead to talking to so many wonderful people. But I can't deny that now sitting back and thinking about that first time I hit record, the first time I shot an out of focus video for my introduction to YouTube, I never knew it would lead me to a place like Germany, a pl standing in front of a Norn fountain. If that's not fate, if that's not destiny, I don't know what is. And I think, you know, again, the whole idea of fate might feel like a shackle to some, but to me, it makes me excited when you finally hit that moment in your life, like, yes, this is why I'm here. This is why I'm alive. You know, the world is so confusing and full, to, and full of so many variables and problems, especially now in our modern age, as our eyes are open to the entire world. We have never been more anxious and had so much on our shoulders than we do in this lifetime that we're living. So when you find a moment that is faded, to me that is freeing because it shows that there's still a purpose, it shows that there's still a plan. Now, another thing I felt I could talk about in this video because I didn't really talk about it in the last video is can you connect with the Norns? This has been something I've been asked before is can you actually sit down and give an offering to the Norns? And quite frankly, I don't know the answer to that question. We have no historical evidence to suggest that anyone in the pre-Christian Scandinavian Germanic times sat down, gave an offering to the Norns and said, please Norns, adjust my fate. 
I don't really see that happening. At least I have never seen that evidence. If you have, please let me know down below because I want to see it too. But as far as I can tell, yes, fertility and birthing was important. And the Norns are very tied to birthing and the fate of a child that comes into this world. So perhaps that is something that people would have done is actually give an offering or speak to the Norns to ask for a good fate for their child. So I was actually finishing filming this video when I did have an idea of how to communicate with the Norns because I've heard from some people that you can, I've heard from some people that you can't, that they're too powerful of beings that you can't really reach out. Yeah, like much like Mimir, you know, they're not really beings we're meant to really connect with as modern practitioners, as just practitioners of this faith. But something I just did, which is something I love about this fountain, is I just went to each of the Norns and I spoke of what they dealt with. I spoke of the present, I spoke of the future, I spoke of the past, and just spent a moment with each one. And then I kissed, like, um, like this one, I kissed that little spot right there under the foot, and then just the pedestals around, um, and just really spent a moment. And again, I don't know if there was this intense connection but it, I, I just felt connected to the moment coming to this spot. So I do think there is something to the Norns. We can't say necessarily historically, but I really do feel a connection here. And it's a pretty powerful one. I have been talking to a few people in Bavaria and Germany um, that have lived in the small villages, especially the Alpine villages in southern Germany, talking about the three sisters or the three Bethans. And this is something that I've kind of mentioned in the last video, if you keep up with all these videos, is I'm finding that there's this strong connection of mythology to three women that travel the countryside dealing out fates and casting spells. Um, I've seen reference to them being called the three mothers, being called the three sisters, um, you know, and one representing old age, middle age, and youth. And so all of these things wrapped together definitely seem to call to the norms. But there's so much more to it, and this is something I'm going to talk about in a video down the road. I'm getting all the information I can right now, and I even know of a site that these three beings are still worshipped today. And I'm going to go to them, and I'm going to take you with me. So if you want to see that video, please make sure you're subscribed, notified, and all those good things, because I will be doing a sort of kind of documentary on it, because this is something that I have really attached to while here in Germany, is these rumors and legends of the three sisters or the three Norns. And I think that's one of the reasons that you can find this fountain still here in downtown Munich in a very prominent and very, you know, visible place. And why I also think that there's still some form of energy that still exists here is because the three Norns, these three sisters, the three Bethans are still honored here in Germany today. And so the answer to, can you honor the Norns now? Historically, I can't really say one way or another. But it seems like there still is a legend here that you can. But my name is Jacob, and I am a Norse pagan. And thank you for joining me for this adventure as we found the Norn Fountain in Munich, Germany. I hope you've enjoyed this beautiful location. And until next time, and until the hall, skull. Beginning the wisdom of Odin, my main goal has been to share with you my experience as a Norse pagan living in this modern world. And so far, almost after two years, I feel like I'm still maintaining that goal as I'm just honest with you about my experiences as I try to traverse this complicated world while worshiping and honoring the old ways. So if you like this concept, if you like the wisdom of Odin even more, please think about donating to Patreon. It's the only way I'm able to do this full time the only way I'm able to take you to places like this and show you my adventures across Midgard as a Norse pagan. So I will put a link down below and I also have a lot of benefits to go with it, plus my eternal gratification for it. Um, I am losing my voice. This has been a really exciting day. Um, so yeah, thank you very much. And until the haul, skull.